Hi, welcome or welcome back. My name is Felicia. I'm a knitter living in Washington, D.C. And this is my little corner of the internet where I like to share all of my knitting and the fiber fun that comes along with it. I am so excited for today's special edition Maryland Sheep and Wool vlog and recap. I had so much fun over the past weekend hanging out with so many of my fiber friends, meeting so many of you in person who came up and gave me hugs and showed me what you were working on or what you had been knitting, showed me the yarn that you were purchasing, influenced me to buy some of the yarns that you were purchasing, and it was just such an amazing time. So thank you, thank you, thank you to any and everyone that came up and spoke and said hi, gave me a hug, um, that had a conversation with me. It was an amazing, amazing time, and I had so much fun. And I hope that I get to go to so many more Fiber events and meet so many more of you. Um, it really was, like, it was an amazing weekend. I am overjoyed with the things that I was able to pick up and find. And so I want to share a little bit about what I did this weekend and the things that I picked up this weekend. Anything that I mention will be linked below. All of the shops will be linked below. If I can find the exact thing that I purchased, I will link to that below as well. So make sure that you check the description box for all of the links. Everything will be linked below. And yeah, let's get into it. It's it's quite a lot, but I'm excited for everything that I purchased. And I have plans actually for everything that I purchased. I don't know if I'm gonna get into that. Maybe I'll do, I'll, maybe I'll start to share a little bit more of that in the podcast um, in terms of like specifically what I'm gonna knit with each of these things. But if I went into all of my future plans, this video would be forever. And I don't want this video to be that long. So I'm just going to share what events I went to and what I picked up at each of those events. First event that I went to was on Friday. It was yarn centric. It was an amazing event. It was indoors, which is nice because I don't like to be hot and I'm allergic to outside. So it was nice that it was inside. It was air conditioned. It was wonderful. It was spaced out really well. There was enough space to freely move around. It didn't feel crowded. It didn't feel overwhelming. There were, to me, there was the perfect amount of vendors. There weren't so many that you felt like you were gonna miss people, but there weren't so few that it didn't feel like it was really worth your time or effort to go to the event at all. It was a timed ticketed event so you bought a ticket for a specific time slot and then you could come during that time slot and shop. It was my experience that they weren't forcing people to leave in between time slots. So I think it was, you know, come during your time and kind of shop. There were enough vendors that you could very easily, and I did use my entire time slot, walking around, looking at things, picking up things, shopping. And but it was also not so many vendors that you felt like you had to rush through the process of looking um, or shopping. It was the perfect amount of time for the for the number of vendors that were there. They also had a coffee like an, a coffee shop that was inside, as well as a woman that was selling um, like cakes and treats. It was really nice. There were some food trucks outside. There were a couple of vendors that were also outside. It was a wonderful event. I had such an amazing time at that event. So the first place I went, because I knew, I knew I was going to have to fight to try to get what I wanted, was to see my girl Shayla at Black Pearl Magic. I wanted a sweatshirt. My size was sold out. So I did not get a sweatshirt. But I got something better? Question mark? Question mark? Question mark? I don't know. Instead of getting the sweatshirt that I, I really wanted, that's what I went for, I got this. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Um, as many of you know, my, well, or don't know, some of you may, may not know, but my college colors were orange and green. They are orange and green. And so I kind of have an affinity for orange and green. I love them in combination together, especially. But something about this orange was just, it was speaking to me. It was, uh, I don't know. And it has the signature rainbow zipper. Look at that. Oh. It's so good. And the zipper is so like smooth because, you know, not everybody has a quality zipper. But Shayla, Shayla has a quality zipper. So this is going to be a really great notions pouch when I travel. It's made out of um, kind of a thicker vinyl. It's not it's not 
um, super thick, but it's still like pliable and it's smooth on the inside, soft and buttery on the outside. You're going to be able to like, I'm going to, well me, because this one is mine. I'm going to be able to like wipe it down if anything spills inside or anything like that. I love this pouch. So I was really excited to pick up one of these. And I think that this color became, or, or this bag became sort of my color inspiration for the day because you're gonna notice a theme with the types of colors that I was gravitating towards. The second place that I had to immediately go was to see Ayn and Darcy at the Passion Knits booth. So Ayn is the owner, dyer, creative genius behind Passion Knits, and Darcy was there being an amazing friend and supporting her, and so I went there because I wanted to find yarn for the Cuddle Puddle Wrap, which is a assigned pooling, triangular shaped shawl pattern that Darcy designed and she designed it in Ein's coloring book yarn which is an assigned pooling yarn and I wanted to be able to look at the colors in person and be able to pick the exact skeins that I wanted for my shawl. So the shawl is designed in fingering or it can be you, you can use fingering or DK you can use as many or as few skeins as you want to use for the pattern when I went there, I was immediately drawn to this color. So this color is just called orange. And it, I mean, it almost glows. It's so pretty. And this is on the Darling base, which is 100% superwash. And this is a DK weight. Right, yeah, this is a DK weight. So I really wanted to do a fingering weight um, shawl. I prefer to knit with fingering weight. But the DK weight is going to be just fine. And I think I'm actually going to knit this up for my mom. Um, I think that she would look beautiful with this color. Uh, she, uh, she just has like the most beautiful skin tone. And so I think this orange is going to really pop. So I picked up some skeins of that to knit the Cuddle Puddle Wrap. And then I walked around and I saw this mohair. And I left it because I was trying to be good. And so what I told myself I was going to do is I was going to walk around. I was going to look at all of the vendors, see everything there was to see, and then make my decision. I, I got what I came to get, and then I was going to look around and see what else was there. And so I went into the cake wool um, booth, and it was beautiful, beautiful samples, beautiful yarn. And I saw this mohair and I loved the color of it, but I said I was going to walk around and see if it, if that was the one for me. And it was, so it came home with me. This is the color Waking Dream. To me, it is a, not quite a bubblegum pink, but it has, it leans a little like strawberry to me. It reads like a strawberry daiquiri kind of vibe it's a creamy pink and I really just love the color and I love it on mohair I saw it on a couple of other bases but something about it on the mohair was just it was doing it for me so I picked up two skeins of this hopefully this will be enough to just make like a loose airy top on really big needles I think that'll be really fun I have a couple of patterns in mind that I think would work really well for this. I'm going to just check the yardage, but I only grabbed two skeins of it. That was whatever I make, this is going to have to be enough because it's all that I've got. So I picked up two skeins of that. Then I made one of, I think, the best purchases that I made for all of the weekend. I made some, I got some good deals, but this was like by far one of the better deals that I got. So this company is called Recycled Yarn and Again, I'm gonna have everything linked below. But what she does is she harvests the yarn from sweaters and then sells it. So instead of you having to go through the work of thrifting and finding sweaters and taking it apart and doing all of that, which is great for those of you who have the patience, endurance, stamina, motivation, desire to do that. I don't, I just want the pretty yarn. So, I saw this yarn, it was practically free. It was such a good deal. This is 100% cashmere yarn and this beautiful coral peachy pink color. 
it is a lace weight, but there's about 2,400 yards. So I have plenty of yarn to hold it double and knit something amazing. I don't know if I'm gonna pair some mohair with it or what, but this yarn is so soft. It's so luxurious. And everything about her like branding was just stunning. My favorite part is the labels. So I don't know if it's gonna focus on this, but it's a handwritten label that tells you, so this is recycled yarn, 100% cashmere, two ply lace weight. And it says, in my past life, I was both sleeves of a Talbot's sweater. So this used to be a Talbot's sweater and it was recycled and I have three skeins of it. And I'm so excited. And if you go on her Instagram page, she actually has a picture of this yarn and the sweater that it used to be. And she's like hanked it up and washed it. I mean, it still has a little bit of, of crinkle to it. It's just, that's what happens with that sort of, with, with yarn like that. But again, I'm gonna hold it double and it's gonna be amazing, amazing. I'm so excited to find the perfect pattern for this. This is one of those yarns that it is gonna have to tell me exactly what it wants to be because this is like special yarn, very, very special yarn and I love it. So I had to take it home with me. It was so good. It was so, so, so good. So after I left, um, yarn centric I went to the fiber friends event at the magpie fibers flagship store it was a beautiful event there were so many vendors there um, it was I mean if you've never been to the magpie flagship oh I have more hair on my face if you've never been to the magpie flagship I highly recommend that you go it's a beautifully curated store it's laid out in such an amazing way there's a vault in the back which is really fun um, and they have everything that you can think of. They have notions, they have needles, they have yarn, they have fabric, they have buttons. It's like a haberdashery. They have so many things, so many amazing brands. It's not just all Magpie yarn. It's basically a yarn store, um, but it, they also carry all of Magpie fibers, which is amazing. So you can get such a wonderful mix and match of different things and you get the curated experience of Magpie, right? Like you get their vibe being in the store. It's like going into somebody's home. Like you really get to see the essence of who they are and what inspires them. And it's a beautiful place to be. I spent so long in there, one, talking to some of you, talking to the Magpies, um, and playing with yarn and seeing everything that they had in there. It was so much fun. So many beautiful things in there. And I left with just a handful of those beautiful things. I was alerted, I'm gonna put my bag in my lap so it's easier. I was alerted to the fact that there was a sale bin. And y'all know, mama loves a sale. I love me a bargain. And so I went to see what was over there what I saw was um, like some Tweety yarn. I forgot who it was by, but I like Tweety yarn, I think in theory, but I'm trying to do a much better job of buying yarn that I'm gonna want to actually knit with and not yarn that is just pretty to me. The Tweed yarn was pretty, but I knew that I was not gonna wanna knit with that yarn or wear the thing that I knit with that yarn. So I left it. And instead, I picked up some Ritual dyes. This is their Elder Base, which is 100% Rambouillet. We, we know she loves a rustic yarn. And it's a light worsted weight. These are the colors that I picked up. So I have much more of this yellow color, which is called Forsythia. I think I got three skeins of this yarn and then one skein of each of these. And I'm thinking about doing some color work. So finding it, to me, the yarn le leans a little DK. So I think I can find a DK pattern where I can do four colors and have a color work sweater. So I have plenty of skeins of this. I think I have six skeins of it. It was 40% off. So I, I mean, they were like giving it away, right? And then the other fun thing I picked up was this mohair. This is a one-of-a-kind colorway. I love mohair. It is no secret. I love a mohair. Um, and I think I talked about this on a recent podcast. I have realized that I prefer 
my variegation to come in in the mohair. I feel like it's a lot softer and I think it's a lot easier for me to incorporate it into my wardrobe and into my personal style that way. And so I picked up one skein. They only had one. I would have grabbed however many they had. I would have grabbed. They only had the one. It's a one of a, one of a kind colorway. I don't know if it's based off of a regular Magpie colorway. I didn't see anything else in the store that looked similar to it. I was going to try to like piecemeal together. Then I realized I didn't want to do that. So I don't know what this is going to become. I'm thinking about holding it with either holding it double to um, do like color work and a yoke or holding it with a yarn that I use like in a color work sweater. I think that will be really fun and this color is so perfect like it's got all of my favorite colors it's got some orange it's got purple it's got some like scummy green in there I mean it's just such a beautiful color I wish I knew what it was based off of but it doesn't matter I brought this one home I love it I have an idea of what I'm gonna use it for and I have a couple of yarns in my stash that I think I can pair it with and it will make that yarn look amazing and then this yarn will also pop so we'll see what that becomes but that's what i picked up at magpie and then i went to maryland sheep and wool both days of the festival I went on Saturday with one of my friends and then on Saturday I went with Darcy and Ayn and so I'm gonna show you what I got on Saturday and then show you what I got on Sunday so Saturday was a lot of fun because I was with my friend who is a baby knitter and she loves bright punchy saturated colors like we have very different styles and aesthetics and so I love shopping with people who are attracted to different things because I feel like it helps me to get outside of my own the things that I am naturally always drawn to like I still got yarn that is like Felicia yarn but it was nice to see other options and to think creatively about what yarn can be and she had never been to anything like this before so it was amazing to like see her experiencing a wool festival for the first time and then also being able to find some really great deals there were a lot of um really good options and like affordable options at the festival you just kind of had to search around for them and i think you also have to know what is a good deal and what isn't a good deal which just comes with a little bit of experience of shopping and asking the right questions but she was able to snag some amazing deals and find some beautiful yarn i wasn't really looking for anything when i went on on saturday mainly because i had done plenty of shopping on friday and was loving the yarn that i had and was already feeling so inspired by that yarn that there i just didn't really feel like i was going to find anything that i really wanted that i just like could not live without and i had said on my last podcast episode that i really wanted to try to find some things that i couldn't normally access and that just felt really unique and special to Maryland Sheep and Wool. So I, oh, I thought I had lost <laughs> my purchases. So um, I was walking around and we had been there for a few hours and I just really hadn't found anything. There were a couple of things that I almost purchased. And like I said, I like to do a, a full lap around wherever I am before I make a big purchase, unless I just know I absolutely cannot live without that item. And so I had done a couple of laps and honestly nothing was really like screaming for me to take it home. I had seen some things, I liked it, but not enough. And so I decided, you know, to just like walk away and if I still really wanted it, then I would circle back for it. And then I ran into Tie-Dye Diva and she was like, there's a lady like over here with this great deal on mohair. 
I love a mohair. So I went over there and sure enough, she had a great deal on mohair and she had a beautiful color, this beautiful color. I walked away um, and I said, okay, I'm gonna you know, keep walking around and if I decide that I really want it, then I'll, I'll go back and get it. So I went back and got it and it is this mohair. It's such a vibrant orange, it's tonal, it's stunning, it's so beautiful. This is 100 grams of mohair and I just, I needed it. I don't know how else to describe it, I just saw it and I was like, I need that mohair. And you know, I'm again, I'm in my melon era, so there was just something about it that I needed it, couldn't leave it. Um, and I got a, it was a real, there was a really good deal on it. She. I think this was like 30 or 35 bucks for 100 grams of mohair, which is, I mean, practically free. And she, I was talking to the dyer and she was just saying that she really strives to try to keep her prices as low as possible. I, I don't know the mechanics of how she's able to do that, but I appreciate it as the consumer. And, you know, I firmly believe in paying the price that people charge for their work. So I'm not one to tell people how much things should or should not be, but mohair can get expensive and as someone who likes to hold it you know as a second strand in projects whenever i can find an affordable mohair i'm gonna go for it and it's got the same exact um composition as a lot of the mohairs that i buy from other indie dyers so i had to get i had to get it it was i mean it was a good deal so i got that um and then we went to the cc's wool tent and I was walking around the tent and I saw this sample of a wool and honey by um, Andrea Mowry. And I love that pattern. I think it's such a pretty pattern. And it's one that I've like thought about knitting a few times. I kind of want to knit it in the called for yarn in the Brooklyn Tweed yarn. But anyway, they had this yarn, they had this sample of it in this beautiful like golden, yellow, muddy brown color. And my friend picked up a skein and she was like, is this enough for me to knit a sweater? And I was like, yep, it's plenty. And because she was going to buy two of them. And I was like, yeah, you don't need that much yarn. One will be plenty, plenty. But there were only two left. And I kept looking at it and I was like, I really love that color. It's going to be such a beautiful color in the fall. And so I, I got it. Um, I picked up this big mama of a skein it's literally the size of my head and I have a big head it's the size of my head the color is called honeybee it is 100% super wash merino super wash merino I mean look at the color it's so beautiful now I'm not a huge fan of variegated yarns uh especially I I prefer a variegated mohair I just or surrey or fluffy yarn I feel like they just are softer in that way so I don't know if I'm gonna hold a mohair with it I'm considering trying to find a mohair that's this color there we go I'm considering trying to find a mohair that's this kind of golden brown color and hold it with it to kind of mute down and tone and and soften the variegation because in the wool and honey sample it was just very it was a lot more variegated than what I would prefer but I think there was sort of a way there's a way to work around that without altering the integrity of the color that's already in this. But it was also that variegation that I, I really enjoyed. Um, I may also try to look for a mohair that's a little bit darker or maybe a little warmer. I'm not quite certain, but I love this. And this color is gonna be so beautiful. Um, I sort of have an idea of what pattern that this might become, but I'm gonna hold off and see because this won't get cast on for a while and I am inclined to change my mind always. So that was day one of Maryland Sheep and Wool. On day two, I went with Darcy and Ayn, um, Darcy of Darcy Does It, and Ayn, the dyer and creative genius behind Passion Knits Yarn. And that was a lot of fun because again, Darcy and I have very different like aesthetics and we are attracted to very different colors. But it was so fun going shopping with somebody who has a different eye, who has a different take on things and see what they're attracted to and see how that sort of like sparks your creativity and helps you to think about new and different ways to look at and think about things. 
one thing that I was definitely on the market for that day was a drop spindle. I have been talking to Darcy about how I really am interested in spinning and she recommended that I just start with like a drop spindle. And so on the first day um, that I was out there, I had looked at a couple of different um, vendors, but the drop spindles were very, very expensive. And I didn't have a frame of reference for how much they should cost. So I was asking and yeah, it, it was just like high. They were, some of them were like $100 and I just didn't want to make that big of a financial investment into spinning if I wasn't sure that I was going to actually enjoy the process of spinning or really want to do it and I also decided that if I did really enjoy spinning that I would probably pretty quickly be on the market to get an actual spinning wheel and so I didn't want to spend a hundred dollars on a drop spindle when I know that I would probably be looking to be in the market for a spinning wheel that costs several hundred dollars so it just didn't seem to make good financial sense to spend that much so we walked around I found one that I really really liked um, but it was still kind of expensive and I said I'm gonna keep walking around and looking somebody will have something in my price range and if they don't then I'll come back and get this other spindle that I really like and then I found this shop that had a spindle that was in my price point and is gorgeous so this is from TF Woodcraft it is a top roll drop spindle that weighs 50 grams and it is made out of purple heartwood and it's so pretty and this is I guess to help me the lady showed me some things I don't know anything about spinning um, so yeah it'll be a while before I feel like I can talk intelligently about it but just know that I got a really pretty drop spindle and then I also picked up some Icelandic combed top this was a really good this is two ounces um, and it was a really good price so I picked up some of that to practice with and then hopefully when I feel a little bit more comfortable I will pick up some fun fiber but I just wanted to find something that was affordable and relatively easy so to work with so that I could kind of get the technique down I looked at some fibers but there was nothing that I just felt like I absolutely wanted to have in that moment and because I don't know what kind of spinner I am and are like am going to be and what I eventually want to do I didn't want to just like go full force and buy all the spinning things until I just felt a little bit more comfortable like buying yarn is already a full-time job so I didn't need to add buying fiber to make the yarn that just felt like a whole other thing and I wasn't ready to go down that rabbit hole um, but that was really fun and um, the owner I think it was the the craftsman's wife she um, was just giving me some tips and really helping me pick out different spindles and so that was really fun because that one was just it was really pretty and it felt unique and special and like not something that I could just easily find anywhere so I'm really excited to start playing with that and then I made one last big purchase I was satisfied with everything that I had purchased didn't really feel like I needed anything else I had kind of been looking to find some yarn on a cone because I sort of feel like that's what you go to a fiber festival to do is to like buy yarn on a cone and I hadn't seen any on a cone that I just felt like I couldn't live without and we went to this tent that was it was it was a bit chaotic there was a lot going on in that tent uh, I contributed to the chaos in my own unique way but there, it was just very chaotic and um, so I so I get to the tent and I see this huge cone of magenta mohair I mean, I had to have it. I just, I couldn't leave it. And so I did it. This, by my rough back of the envelope calculations, is about 650 grams of mohair. It takes me about 125, give or take, maybe a close 150, to knit a sweater. So yeah, I have plenty of this mohair. I have a couple of ideas 
of what this might become one of which I'm really excited for and yeah I'm I don't know it was just it was it was such a good deal it was such a good deal so I had to bring this mohair home with me and then after that I was like I'm cut off immediately cut off like I have done plenty of shopping and spending for the year on on yarn and I don't need to buy any more I literally have yarn like pouring out of my ears at this point so I actually if I'm going to be able to also live in my apartment with the yarn I'm gonna have to start knitting the things that like knitting with the yarn um knitting a lot faster which means that I need to wrap this video up so I can get back to working on all of my projects because this yarn is not gonna knit itself. I am so excited to share what these will eventually become. So if you don't already, follow me on Instagram. I will have my Instagram linked below. You should also subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell so that you can see when I upload a new podcast episode where you will see what this yarn will eventually become. Until next time, bye y'all.